Hello, and welcome to the 2016 Rulesville Parks and Recreation Adult Softball Online Managers Meeting. This 15-minute meeting is designed to succinctly convey league information for the 2016 season to ensure that your team gets the most out of its season here in Roseville. First, we want to thank you for choosing to play your softball here in Roseville. We know that you have many softball options throughout the metro, and we appreciate that you've chosen to play with us. We have more than 140 teams spread over six nights of play and are excited with all that we have to offer. The goal of our leagues is to ensure that they are safe, well-organized, sportsmanly, fun, and fair to participants of all backgrounds and skill levels. All policies and procedures in this league are made with that goal in mind. My name is Matthew Johnson and I am the Recreation Supervisor in charge of softball here in Roseville. I can be reached by either email or phone with any questions or concerns that you may have. My primary method of communications with managers will be email. If you do not use email, please let me know that as soon as possible so that I know I need to contact you by phone or other means if changes are made. Our league website is cityofroseville.com backslash softball and your softball schedules will be linked on that site or can be visited directly by going to teamsideline.com slash RPR. League schedules will be posted by Friday, April 15th. Any schedule changes that are made will be posted on the league page. Additionally, if any changes are made, managers will be emailed to be notified of the change. In addition, as you can see, the league pages do indicate updated standings and results for each game. We do encourage managers to check back often and let us know if we have a score entered incorrectly so that we can make sure to keep an accurate tab on the league. Games are scheduled to begin Friday, April 22nd and each subsequent day after. So for example, Sunday games begin April 24th, Monday games April 25th, Tuesday, April 26th, and so on. Each league will have a playoff for the top eight teams. Leagues with more than 12 teams will also have a consolation bracket, and our Sunday league, which has 24 teams, will have a second consolation bracket to ensure that a majority of teams do play playoff games. Rosters. Managers will be emailed a blank roster form, and it also can be found on your schedule page or on our softball league page. All teams are required to provide a roster prior to their first game. Rosters must include all players that you intend to use on your team at any point during the season. Substitute players will be allowed during the regular season, but only rostered players may be used in the playoffs. When selecting substitute players, teams are encouraged to keep in mind the skill level of their league and not bring in quote-unquote ringer players who make the balance of the league unfair. Teams who do not submit a roster will forfeit any game if they are protested against. Inclement weather. If games are in question, please contact our weather website, which can be found on our league page or your schedule page, or call the weather hotline by 4.30 p.m. Play, no play decisions will be based on the status of the field as of 4.15 p.m., not based upon any forecast conditions or projections. We have had several situations over the past few years where forecasts have appeared to be dire, calling for 100% chance of rain, but the skies ended up clearing and games ended up getting in. If conditions prior to 4.30 dictate that fields will be unplayable, we will make every, update, every effort to update the weather website as early as possible so that teams know their games will be canceled. Should conditions change after 4.30 p.m., the umpires on site will make the final play-no-play -play decision based on the conditions of their field. In the event of after-hours cancellations, we will attempt to update the weather hotline, but cannot do so unless we have received confirmation that all fields have been canceled for the night. Should rainouts occur, up to two weeks of rainouts will be rescheduled. Please remember, the game time is the time that's listed on your schedule, and teams should be prepared to be ready to play at that time. 
A 10-minute grace period will be allowed for 6-10 games, but that time does mean that 10 minutes will be removed from your game time, so teams should plan on being ready by 6 p.m. A 5-minute grace period will also be allowed for all other game times, but again, that 5 minutes will be deducted from your total playing time. Once a team has 8 players present, they must begin and cannot wait for a 9th or 10th player to arrive prior to beginning the game. Games will be seven innings long, with no new innings set to begin 55 minutes from the scheduled start time. This excludes wood bat games, which will play up to nine innings, but still have the 55-minute time limit in place. Please remember, if you must forfeit a game, please contact your opponent and our office by phone as soon as possible. Nobody likes to show up to find that they don't have an opponent. However, we do encourage teams to make every effort to field a team for each game so that teams can get their full allotment of games. Game balls for the entire season will be provided at your first game. Managers will be given a package of balls containing one game ball per home game. Managers must bring a ball for each of their home games. If a home team for fails to provide a new game ball, they will begin that game behind 3-0. Visiting teams should also be prepared to provide a used ball in the event that the primary game ball is hit out of play. For playoff games, umpires will have game balls ready at the field. Teams will also be provided a scorebook at their first game. More information will be provided about that in later slides. Please remember, in accordance with statewide USSA standards, all non-wood bats must have the new USSA stamp on them. The old text USSA logo will not be accepted. Only the new stamp permanently placed on the bat will be accepted. Bats must also be unaltered and comply completely with USSA Rule 2. Umpires will be instructed to check all bats prior to their first game of the season. Teams will be provided with a scorebook prior to their first game. Each team is expected to keep book for each game. At the conclusion of each half inning, please confer with the umpire and the other scorekeeper to ensure that all three parties have the same score. In the event of a discrepancy, if it is caught at the end of the half inning, it should be easy to compare books to correctly assess the correct score. However, if errors are allowed to persist, it is often difficult to go back two, three, or four innings to correct them. So please ensure that you are checking with the umpire and the other scorekeeper at the end of each half inning. Conduct and sportsmanship. The primary focus of all Roseville leagues will be fun. Teams are expected to utilize good sportsmanship at all times towards both their opponent and the umpire. As managers, Please prevent your team from getting into trash talking with other team or arguing the arguing with the umpires. Remember, be a leader out there. Please try to keep these games fun and recreational. Umpires. All umpires officiating in the city of Roseville are expected to be USSA certified. Additionally, this year the city has implemented a Roseville only umpires meeting to discuss local rules and its expectation for umpires. Teams may reasonably expect umpires to be on time, to behave professionally, to hustle, and to briefly discuss a call with a manager if he or she approaches the umpire in a respectful way after time has been granted. It is unreasonable of teams to expect umpires to get every call correct, to know every single rule of the large USSA rulebook inside and out, to tolerate frequent complaints and verbal abuse, to tolerate comments about the umpire's integrity or that are personal in nature, such as, are they paying you today, or you're terrible, and it is unreasonable to expect an umpire to tolerate complaints about balls and strikes. In general, judgment calls are not open to dispute. Teams must learn to live with the fact that umpires will make calls that they will not agree with and move on with the game. When dealing with umpires, please keep the following items in mind. 
First, only team managers or players involved may discuss a call with an umpire, and only after time has been granted by the umpire. Discussions must be respectful. No shouting, gesturing, or profanity will be tolerated. After the umpire has given his or her explanation, the manager must return to his position or the dugout immediately. Please note, rule interpretations may be formally protested in accordance with Roseville Parks and Recreation rules as found in the rulebook. However, judgment calls are final and are not open for protest. The following actions will result in warning or immediate ejection if observed by an umpire. Please prevent players on your team from engaging in any of these actions. Continuous complaints about judgment calls. Any player besides the manager leaving their position to argue a call with an umpire. Shouting at an umpire. Use of profanity. Use of personal statements towards an umpire. Threats or taunting any other player, spectator, or umpire. Or continuing a behavior after receiving a warning about it. This se season, we are attempting to improve our umpire evaluation program. On one or two dates throughout the season, you will be sent an umpire evaluation asking you to evaluate the umpires in one of your games. Please evaluate the umpires based on their professionalism, hustle, rule knowledge, and game management. Please do not base your evaluation upon the outcome of the game or whether or not you feel judgment calls were ruled in your favor. If you have an exceptionally good or bad experience with an umpire, please fill out our umpire's evaluation form which will be available on our league website. Teams are reminded to clean out their dugout and dugout area before you leave for the night. Please ensure that no bottles or other items are left behind in your dugout. Additionally, please be respectful of the neighbors and pedestrians who walk through our neighborhood parks. Make sure that team members are not using profanity or doing anything else that would make residents uncomfortable. Finally, please note that city ordinance does prohibit alcohol and tobacco in Roseville Parks. In the fall of 2015, the Capital Region Watershed District installed a cistern underneath Beedale Villa Field. This was installed to help reduce flooding in the area and reduce runoff into Lake McCarran's, which was causing pollution. The cistern being installed under the field allowed us to continue to use the softball field moving forward while mitigating some of these flooding issues. Additionally, the installation of the cistern will allow us to use runoff water for watering the field, which will save an estimated 1.3 million gallons of water annually. Because of the exca excavation associated with this project, there will be an ag lime patch down the right field line this summer during softball season. Although this may look a little funny, the field will be ready to play this summer when games begin. At the conclusion of this softball season, the ag lime will be removed and sod will be fully restored for the 2017 season. If you have any questions about this field, please don't hesitate to contact me directly. League Playing Rules Although there are multiple Roseville revisions to the USSSA rulebook, here's our few, here are a few that we'd like to highlight. First, the home run limits. The men's C division has a maximum of four home runs and plays with the plus one rule. This is new for this year. Please note, only the C division will use the plus one rule. Men's D League has two home runs. Corec C has two home runs. Corec D allows no home runs, with the exception of the short field in Central Park, Lexington, Northwest. In our Woodbat League, home runs are unlimited. Please note, any home run beyond the limit will be only an out. This differs from the new USSSA rule. Again, any home run beyond the limit will be only one out. All leagues will use a three ball and two strike count and there will be no courtesy foul. This means that if a player has one strike against them and hits a foul ball, they will be out. Players are not permitted to dig into the batter's box by kicking dirt out of the way as they come to the box. However, players may kick dirt around to even out the spot that they are batting in, essentially filling in holes that are made, but may not dig out the batter's box. No metal spikes will be permitted in our leagues. 
and our courtesy runner will be a limited will be limited to one courtesy runner per inning. The courtesy runner will be the last person to be put out. Double play situations. In an effort to prevent injury, Roseville has clarified the double play rule. All runners to must either slide legally or attempt to get out of the way of the fielder turning the double play. For a slide to be legal, it must be both on the ground and directly toward the base. In the image on the right of your screen, although this play is legal in Major League Baseball, it would be illegal in our league as the runner is not going directly toward the base and his right leg is elevated and not on the ground. This would be ruled an out for both the runner sliding and the runner at first base, and the double play would be granted regardless of where the shortstop's throw ended up. Additionally, we have implemented a prohibition on hitting the ball back toward the pitcher intentionally in an effort to intimidate that pitcher. Also known as lighting up or buzzing the pitcher. If an umpire is confident that a team is intentionally hitting the ball at the pitcher, they are instructed to warn and then eject the offender. This is a dangerous situation that can lead to severe injury and even death. Please do not allow members of your team to intentionally hit the ball back up the middle in an effort to intimidate the pitcher. Champions, at the conclusion of the season, each regular season and playoff champion will, be, will receive championship t-shirts and their choice of a trophy or restaurant gift card. I will contact each manager who is entitled to prizes at the end of the season to get their sizes and determine which award they would like. In conclusion, please remember that we want this league to be well organized, safe, and with an emphasis on sportsmanship. Managers, I ask you to please be leaders in this and encourage your team to follow suit. Keep these games in perspective. Yes, competition is important, but we want them to be safe and fun above all else. Finally, please do not hesitate to contact me with any questions or concerns that you may have at any time throughout this season. One other note, we do have a few additional slides available to CORAC teams to clarify some of our CORAC rule modifications. Finally, I want everybody to have a great, fun, safe season. I hope to see you out at the fields. Have a great year and good luck.